Miss Cicely Tyson is one of our queens of the stage and screen. She was born a scrawny little girl with a heart murmur, twin liabilities in the West Indian culture, Tyson said. And her parents were told she wouldn't live past three months old, but her mother was a very proud, determined, and faithful woman set out to prove modern medicine wrong, which we know she did. As we know, Cicely Tyson went on to live till 96 years old. And I'm gonna quote her here where she said in her autobiography, Just As I Am, a reticent girl born in the slums and bathed in the mighty timbre of a church organ ever stumbled into such a grand arena. And I must say, after reading Miss Tyson's autobiography, she definitely has a distinctive voice, but it's, it's, I want to say it's poetic, her voice. There's a lot of quotes in here that's just, you just want to remember them, you know, you want to write them down and decorate your walls with them, okay? She, she has that kind of voice. But anyway, so Miss Tyson, she was only married twice in her lifetime. And the first time she was 19 years old. No, she was 18 years old the first time she got married. And that, well, not the marriage, but her, the first time she had sex with her future husband, that could contentiously be described as rape, but she doesn't refer to it that way, but it kind of <laughs> is interesting, but she still went on to marry that man. And in those days, that's what you did when you got pregnant. Hello, my name is Tamika. And whether you stumbled upon Junkie for a story or are here by intention, thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoy this video. And if so, please give it a like and subscribe by the end. And don't forget to hit the bell for notifications so you won't miss out whenever I release new videos. Also, there will be a link in the description for the book that is mentioned in this video, Cicely Tyson, Just As I Am. And now on to the video. Thank you. Miss Tyson met her first husband, Kenneth, when she was in high school. Now he was on her mother's good list because he was a pastor's son. So her mother actually encouraged her to go out with Kenneth. She didn't sound too interested, <laughs> but she obliged and they began dating. And then one day she describes in her autobiography that she went to see him at his place. And then she said she had to go. And he proceeded to make out with her. And she says, he pulled me even closer, pressing his aroused body into mine. Our car caressing grew more intense and he lifted my dress. I recalled slightly, but before I could back away, he was inside me. Now that's how she describes the moment she lost her virginity. And she sounds a bit naive at this point. Um, and it sounds like she did live a very sheltered life. And she goes on to say she wasn't sure if they even had sex. She didn't know what it was. She figured it didn't count because they were standing up. And then she later found out she was pregnant. So yeah, she knew that was sex <laughs> at that point. And then the situation with her senior year of high school. So once she became pregnant, the school officials told her she could not finish her school year the way everyone else did because they could not have a pregnant teenage student showing up every day for class. So they told her, actually, I should point out, she was only four weeks away from graduating and she was called to the principal's office and they told her 
that they had disregarded her senior year and she would have to repeat the coursework at the school's night program if she wanted her diploma. Just four weeks away from graduating. Yeah. After that, they got married. They did the right thing, but she realized, you know, this really isn't for me. She tried it and then she just up and left. <laughs> it doesn't sound like her first husband was a bad guy, but she just, she couldn't see herself doing this. <laughs> so she bounced and then she went, got herself an apartment for her and her daughter. And she found a full-time job so she can provide for her daughter. Eventually she got into acting and we know the rest, but after that marriage, she had some romances here and there, but it sounds like nothing special. And then came Miles Davis. Now, I read Miles Davis' autobiography as well. And he is, <laughs> he's a funny dude, okay? He's funny, but he's also very blunt, okay? <laughs> Now, I remember, I believe I read her autobiography first, and in hers, she mentioned how Miles Davis was talking, basically sl slandering her name, and, and that was after she realized that, I, I think it was when she told him she wanted to separate, and she, she says that he was working on his autobiography, and at first, he was complimentary about the things he had to say about Cicely Tyson. And then once, I don't know if she officially filed for a divorce at that point, but they both knew that the marriage was over. And at that point he sort of, according to Tyson, he changed some statements and things got ugly. But when I read his Miles Davis autobiography, I didn't think it was all that slanderous, you know? It, it, I mean, I guess it takes a lot for me, so <laughs> maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Cicely Tyson, she met Miles Davis around 1966. And at that time, he wasn't officially divorced from his first wife. He wasn't divorced, but they were clearly separated because she was not living with him. Actually, let me correct myself. So they met back in 1952. This was when she was good friends with actress Diane Carroll. And she would visit Carroll at her apartment when she lived in Manhattan. And Diane Carroll lived in the same building as Miles Davis and his wife, his first wife, Frances Taylor, who was a dancer and actress. They met at some performance that he had done, but they didn't really talk at that point, Cicely and Miles Davis. And then they met again in 1965. And at that point, he was still married, but he did let Tyson know that he was separated from his wife, Frances Taylor. But he was also, sounds like he, he expressed interest in Miss Tyson. <laughs> but she said, you know, she wasn't interested because, you know, he had unfinished business with his first wife. So if they struck up a friendship, but then she does admit, well, she tells the story of Miles Davis bawling his eyes out when he got the letter from Francis requesting a divorce officially. And he said he felt like a failure. But at this point, Tyson isn't really describing the relationship as romance, but it sounds like she had some feelings there and she was definitely keeping an eye on him. Now I should point out Miles Davis, if you don't know, he did, have struggles with drug addiction. So in both of their autobiographies, Tyson's and Miles Davis, 
they do agree that Tyson helped him get back on his feet and kick his drug habit, but he had multiple relapses throughout his life. So around 1966, it sounds like things were heating up with them. And she does say that they consummate the relationship. And it sounds like it means more to her than it did to Miles Davis. So when I read her book, Just As I Am, she describes the experience as meaningful. But I think that's because she's one of those women who's not, you know, out here with everybody. Now, when you read Miles Davis' book, <laughs> you get a different story, but you can tell he is much more promiscuous and um, sexually experimental. So it didn't sound like it meant much to him. <laughs> And so because of that, you know, to her, to Tyson, she's thinking this is a serious relationship at this point. But she soon finds out, not only did it not mean anything to Davis, but he also got a new woman, okay? <laughs> so at some point she's... Cicely Tyson says she had a dream or some kind of premonition where she saw Miles Davis in a, I can't remember the type of car, but it was a luxury car, like a Lamborghini or something. It was a white car, I remember she said. And she said she saw him driving around town in the car with another woman in the car with him. And she she didn't recognize the woman, but this is this is like a dream or some kind of premonition she had. And then one day, lo and behold, the woman she saw in her dream, it turns out was funk singer, Betty Mabry. And she was like half his age. She was, she was, I believe in her twenties, like 21 or something. And Miles Davis, you know, was in his forties at that point and probably looked like he was in his 60s because of his addiction. But, you know, the the bottom line is he definitely looked like her senior, okay? <laughs> but for whatever she saw in him, Betty took to him quickly, okay? I mean, he's got he's got some swag. I, I don't I don't know what it is, but <laughs> and so she Cicely Tyson, she found out from some friends of his that Miles Davis up and married Betty Mabry in the middle of, you know, Tyson thinking that they were having a relationship. <laughs> so yeah, she went from in her mind being the woman, his woman, to being the other woman. And then that marriage to Betty Mabry didn't even last long. So <laughs> in the same year, I believe, let me just double check here. I think it was the same year. Okay, so they got married in 68 and then they divorced in 1969, the following year. And Betty did say in interviews that it was because of his violent behavior. Now, when you read his book, he does admit, he's not explicit about how violent he gets with his women, but he does admit that he, he slaps his women around and he he talks about it in a very casual way, so it it misconstrues the severity of his violence, which also contributed to the demise of his first marriage, and that's why she left him. So yeah, Miles Davis. To when it comes to women, he was a very violent man. So now we're on the second divorce with Miles Davis. And so Cicely Tyson, she goes on about her business. She's in Hollywood, making her money, doing well. And she leaves Miles Davis alone. But she does seem to not sever ties completely. And she had a close relationship with his, one of his daughters. So whenever he was in trouble, the daughter would, if she couldn't find Davis, she would reach out to 
Tyson to see if she could find out where he was because sometimes he would go on his drug binges and nobody knew where he went. And Cicely Tyson became an aide in that way. And so she, she stayed, she was distant, but she remained a good friend. And then their a romance picked back up years later. We're talking years later. <laughs> it was around 1973 when Miles Davis returned with all the drama that he came with. So this was after the Oscar nominations. Uh, Cicely Tyson was nominated for Sounder. And this was the year that Diana Ross was nominated as well for Lady Sings the Blues. And Tyson did not win that award, but she says right after the Oscars, then comes Miles Davis. Now, I must say, <laughs> it did kind of look opportunistic that Davis was all of a sudden showing up because his drug habit took him out of commission numerous times. So he would go on these, well, he, he would try to kick the habit cold turkey, but he was a long time drug addict. So when you read his book, he brags about how he would go cold turkey off of drugs. He would just, one time he talked about going to his father's house in I believe Illinois and he would lock himself up in like the guest house, I believe, and just would suffer through the withdrawal that comes with that. And then he'd come out, according to him, fixed, you know, like the way he describes it, he's fixed. But when you read his story, you realize it's it's always temporary, unfortunately. I do feel like he latched onto Tyson as a way to get back on his feet and to rebuild his music career because even though he was considered a legend at that point, he still, he no longer had the clout, no longer the, had the success that he did in his younger years. So in the seventies, his career was, I would say declining. <laughs> and so in my opinion, it seemed like he, he latched on to her for a reason, but that that's just, my perception of it. Basically, Tyson talks about how she stayed in his life and, you know, came around to check on him. And when he was having a really rough night, he would leave his door unlocked and she would find him pass out with Jane Doe, we'll say. <laughs> and, you know, you kind of wonder why she was attracted to him. I mean, he does say in his autobiography that he was he never was sexually attracted to her and that's another reason why i believe this was more of a career move for him to marry cicely tyson now i will say they both they they have different stories when it comes to the marriage so cicely she says that miles davis kept asking her to marry him and so she finally agreed. And Miles Davis says the same thing. <laughs> and then he also says that, that his friends would ask her, you know, can't you see he's dying? Why, why do you want to marry him? Now, let me point out when they got back together the second time, which was around, I, I don't know officially when, because she was a good friend for some years, but in the 70s they got back together and they have been dating but miles davis was in poor health okay he was at this point he would have been in his 40s close to 50 then somewhere close to 50 and he was in really poor health and she talks about how she was taking him to 
any doctor she could find because they were giving him six months to live. You know, they were saying, there's nothing we can do. And then she took him to a holistic doctor and he gave her a formula, I guess, to get Miles Davis back where he needed to be. Because I believe she said, one of the doctors said all of his organs were breaking down. I mean, he was, it, it, the diagnosis was grim, okay? It was not positive at all. And that's another reason why it just sounded weird that she wanted to marry him because he was knocking at death's door, but she nursed him back to health. She was feeding him nothing but vegetables and just all healthy and nutritious foods, okay? And he once again was staying off drugs. But when you read his story, he always says he's staying off drugs, but he does a little bit of cocaine. I don't know. I guess that's junkie talk. I don't know. <laughs> but he doesn't count cocaine. He acts like, you know, if he's doing cocaine, then that that's not really drugs. So <laughs> that's how he would talk in his book. I mean, with his his autobiography is interesting to say the least, but yeah. So she nursed him back to health and then whoever proposed to who, I don't know, <laughs> but they got married. And she said, actually, they got married at Bill Cosby's house on, I think it was Thanksgiving. Yes, it was around Thanksgiving of 1981 when they got married at actor Bill Cosby's home. And she talks about how she called her sister Cicely Tyson, she called her sister and asked for her mother's rings for the wedding. And her sister sent them. Her sister couldn't make it to the ceremony, but she sent the ring uh, to Cicely so she could have it for the wedding. And then all of a sudden the ring was lost. <laughs> yeah, so they got married at Cosby's home in Massachusetts on Thanksgiving day. And both Cosby and his wife Camille were there. And so she was looking for the ring because she wanted to aware of that. She said, she, all of a sudden she couldn't find the ring. She had everything else. And so she searched for her mother's wedding band and could not find it. She finally gave up and just went without it, carried on. And then she says, after the ceremony, the band shows up laying on the bed somewhere. I mean, it was just in plain sight. And she said that was a sign of what was to come. And yeah, she might be right. Because <laughs> that was uh, quite a tumultuous marriage. But it, it was, okay. I started to say it was the longest of the two marriages. Because we know the one was just one year, but no. It, considering what they went through, it was a long marriage. They were married from 1981 to 1989, but it was, it was a challenge. But Tyson does pride herself on claiming that Miles Davis never hit her. It sounds unlikely, <laughs> but that's, that's her story. He still continued his relationships with other women. He blatantly talks about his affairs with other women. She, at one point, found out about a woman he was sleeping with who lived in the same apartment building as them. And she got into a physical fight with this woman. And then she got into a physical fight with Miles Davis out in the street and yanked his wig off. <laughs> and then after that, yeah, that's when they both decided to walk away from the marriage. And that is when Cicely Tyson says Miles Davis changed his tune and rewrote his autobiography to reflect their marriage unfavorably. But like I said, I read the book. I don't think he was all that harsh. I think at the end of the day, they were saying the same thing. He said he did not find her sexually attractive. And it sounds true since he did have relations outside of the marriage. And they did seem to spend just... According to both books, they spent a lot of time apart. You know, he would be on tour in Europe or 
touring the states just all over here and there and then her hollywood career was very successful in these years as well so yeah i could see how he had relations with other people and then he does not sound like the type that's sitting around waiting on a woman to come home but miss tyson prides herself on claiming that she does not mess around with a married man however she did admit to getting involved with him prior to the divorce from Francis Taylor. I mean, it wasn't official yet because even she said she was with him when he received the letter where Taylor was saying she wanted a divorce. But at that point, they were already romantic, okay? <laughs> so, I mean, her tone, I'll say, when she's talking about Betty Mabry, I mean, it sounds like she really didn't care for the girl, <laughs> which is unfair because she probably didn't know Tyson even existed since Miles Davis didn't treat her like she existed. So at that point, you know, but yeah, she became Miles Davis' final wife. And that's not saying much. He ended up passing away two years after they divorced. Yeah, that was quite a trip. And it makes you wonder why she settled for him because to me Cicely Tyson is such a catch at that point or at any point in her life she was a catch and unfortunately Miles Davis I can't say the same for her. I mean I just can't but anyway that's the story on Cicely Tyson and Miles Davis marriage if you like this video give it a like comment, subscribe if you choose. And I will go ahead and put a link in the description for both Cicely Tyson, just as I am, and Miles Davis, the autobiography. If you wanna check those out, I would recommend both. I did listen to Miles Davis, the audiobook, and he narrates his own autobiography. So I will say you can definitely hear his poor health in his voice and it's it's almost sad and i feel like they should not have let him write this book because i i don't know i feel like because he was a drug addict you know it's someone in that state they might be more malicious because they're kind of desperate because i feel like he probably was needing money in a bad financial situation you know, you can make up anything in that state of mind. But nonetheless, those are his words and those are her words. All right, I'm going to get on out of here and I will catch you in the next one. Thank you for listening and watching. Bye.